Coronavirus Q&A. These images are actually captured during the food bank's mega distribution event last week. It shocked people across the city and the country. They served as a reminder of the economic toll the pandemic is having on people in our community. And during tonight's coronavirus Q&A, we're joined by Eric Cooper, the president and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank. I, I really appreciate you being here because I know you did a mega distribution this morning. Are you struck by how many people you were seeing that have not needed your services before? Yeah, Steve. I mean, we're we're amazed, I think, at the unprecedented demand that has just come our way. Uh, San Antonio has been a city that struggled for a long time. We've got a high rate of poverty. We've got a lot of working poor families that were living on the edge. And uh, the coronavirus, in a lot of ways, has pushed them over the edge. But there's so many families that have never had to ask for help. So many families that were donors of the food bank or volunteers of the food bank. Their companies came out and served. And now those are the people that we are serving. Today, 2,000 families at the Alamo Dome, 70% of them, uh, this was the first time they've ever had to ask for help. And so uh, it is our privilege uh, to serve. And San Antonio has really rallied and enabled us to make sure people are getting food. Those are amazing numbers. And I think you told us earlier so you, like you were serving 60,000 meals a week and now you're up to 120,000, is that correct? Yeah, so typically that was our, our, our head count. So we would serve about 60,000 people a week um, over our 16 counties. Um, and now that number today is 120,000 people a week getting food from the food bank and our partner pantries. Now we have about 500 partner pantries. These are churches or traditional nonprofits that the food bank uh, serves and they all withdraw from the main warehouse. And then in addition to that, we've always supplemented distributions with these pop-up uh, uh, distributions. And, and usually these pop-up distributions, they'd serve two to 400 families. Uh, at the onset of the COVID crisis, uh, they, they went from a couple of hundred families to a couple of thousand families. And um, we went to this uh, mega distribution strategy, number one, to make sure we were keeping our volunteers safe. Um, it's so critical to be physically distanced and just be prepared to, to, to manage the crowds. Um, and they are the heroes. Our volunteers uh, that we're serving today and have been serving, they're choosing to come onto the front lines and put themselves in some ways at risk, right? I think uh, we're doing everything safe, but they're still stepping out onto the front line and, and helping families in this time of crisis. So yeah. I couldn't be any more proud of them. Let's get to some of the questions that our viewers uh, actually sent to us on our website. The first one is, what did you learn during last week's mega distribution event and what changes were made before the event that you had this morning? Well, I think number one, we're really trying to get the word out about what other assistance is available for families. And the food bank's known for helping families apply for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP. And we want viewers to know about that program, again, with 70% of our uh, families coming to us for the first time, they don't know about the resources. And so we've been educating them about SNAP and the opportunity for them to get food through that federal safety net. Um, you know, I, I don't like the fact that we're giving out food in a parking lot. I think people should get food in a grocery store. Uh, obviously, uh, a meaningful job and wage allows someone to shop at a grocery store, but also the supplemental nutrition assistance program. So number one, it's been just educating people about those resources that decreases our demand at sites like happened last week. And then this decentralized approach, we really connect families to their closest food pantries um, throughout our 16 counties. And then we set up lots of of more pop-up strategies. We had um, pop-up distributions happening all over the city at a smaller scale, really targeting specific neighborhoods, specific areas where we could serve family to take demand off of the mega site um, so that we wouldn't get the 10,000 that we got last week. Yeah, the, the next question is there was another mega distribution event today. In your opinion, how did that go? 
it went really smooth. I mean, it, it breaks my heart that we're not able to serve every family. And I know um, when we got started, there were families that had not registered um, that we told, hey, um, you need to register for this event. If you need food, here's the locations that we can get you food quickly, but it, it won't be at this event. We, we brought enough food to make sure we took care of all those that had registered. And, uh, you know, it, it, it does. It breaks my heart to have to um, use that tough love, but we want to make sure we control these events. If a family needs food, we absolutely can help them. But we want to make sure that that we just don't run out of food at those sites. Yeah. And um, so. Yeah, and then that, that leads to events. If somebody's in need, how can people get the food that they need? Yeah, so number one is just go to the website, safoodbank.org, hit the Get Help button. You'll pre-register. There's several sites listed on the website. Next week, there'll be uh, two major distributions, um, uh, one at uh, Toyota Field and, and the other one uh, in partnership with the Northside School District. Um, we'll also have other programs or strategies that the families can can benefit from. Now, if they don't get out and, and they're not mobile, if they're a senior or have a disability, you can also um, list that when you put in the, the, the um, need for help. And we'll have volunteers that can deliver a homebound food box. Uh, we've been partnering with um, Via Trans. They've been delivering a lot of boxes. Um, so uh, we want to make sure that you, that you get food as quickly as we can get it to you. And if you go to the website, if you lack Internet access, you can always call our, our hotline. That number is 210-431-8326. And we'll make sure that we uh, uh, get you some some food. Great information on the website. We just put it up as you were talking there. And you can there's a lot of different things you can click on to learn about things like SNAP and other programs that are out there, more than just where you can pick up food when you're in San Antonio. All right, after last week, a lot of donations poured in. What is the food bank supply like right now? I guess supply of food and money. Well, you know, I think most people don't fully understand the volume that the food bank collects and distributes on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis. And I think the, the onset of COVID-19, when we were feeding 60,000 people a week and then it went to 120,000 people a week, we would roughly bring in about 35 to 40 semi truckloads of food each week. So about a semi truckload an hour. Well, at the onset of the crisis, the sources where we'd normally get our food, like uh, grocery stores, they were selling out of food, which meant that there was less food that was being donated. We also rescue food from hotels, restaurants, caterers, a lot of food that's prepared to be eaten and not, we can pick up those leftovers. Well, those two segments of the, of the supply chain, that, that decrease actually dropped us to about 22 semi truck loads wow. for the week which think, you know, 35 to 40, it almost cut our donations in half. When the demand that was being shipped out of the food bank was about 70 semi truckloads. So taking in 22, shipping 70, it really took our supplies at the warehouse down and we were really panicked that we would, we would run out of food. Um, and so that's where we just started to, to, to really reach out to the city, to the county, um, to the state and to the federal government to really educate them on what was happening. Uh, and then um, the community started to step up. And I tell you, uh, last week, you know, we were able to get to that 70 semi truckload level. We, we, we just we had a few extra trucks leave the warehouse, then came in, but we held our ground. Um, if you think about the total supply, it's about three weeks. If If we were you know, struggling to bring it in and it was just going out, we'd empty the warehouse in about two and a half to three weeks. Um, and so we're just working as hard as we can to keep those supplies coming in so that we can continue to meet the need. Final question for you. I do to help. Well, first, let me just say thank you, San Antonio. Um, I, I, we're all exhausted, but, um, San Antonio inspires me. Uh, I mentioned the volunteers. 
but we've got great companies, right? Um, and they're the usual suspects, you know, Valero, HEB, USAA, uh, Nationwide, at and I'll get in trouble because I won't mention all of them because every company in this, ca- in this city has given to the San Antonio Food Bank. Um, and thank you. Uh, the foundations, the individuals, everybody's stepping up. Um, the four things we need is food, time, money, and voice. Um, food donations in the non-perishable sense. We have not asked the community to donate that yet, just because HEB, Walmart, others need opportunity to get caught up. And as soon as they get caught up with their inventory, we'll ask you to donate a non-perishable food item. But money and volunteers um, are huge. And then using your social media platform, um, many people have done you know, collection drives. We have a virtual food drive. And so you don't even need to leave your house. You can you know, do a virtual food drive, get your friends involved, and you can help us big time at the food bank. I'd say the last thing, Steve, that families can do while they're at home is make sure you watch for your census. Um, that's a big way in bringing in those federal resources to our city. So, so go to my2020census.gov, uh, watch for that envelope in the mail, be sure to fill that out because that'll mean resources for our city for this long-term recovery effort uh, at the conclusion of this crisis. Eric, thank you very much for all that you do and for your volunteers and your staff there. I mean, I know it's been a Herculean effort over the last few weeks. So thank you very much for what you do. Hey, thank you guys. And thank you for making time because I know you're on ABC World News tonight. And you know that the fact that you would still go on with us local people, that that means a lot. You know, my, you know, the head is shrinking. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, uh, you know, it was, sw- it was just hitting the head. I was, yeah, I was I, swollen. I, I'm just giving you a grief. We'll be yeah, right back. Yeah.